uh, I've done a lot of reporting on the past of, and including the simulations of the Wall Street banks, the central banks, and the big tech firms all together simulating a massive cyber attack on the financial system as the reason that this will all be brought in. Whitney Webb discusses the potential risks of Bitcoin becoming mainstream as large financial firms like BlackRock get involved. They worry that Bitcoin might stray from its original goal of promoting financial freedom and become controlled by these powerful entities. She also talks about the need for people to stay aware and prepared for broader economic and technological changes. The promise of Bitcoin been hollowed out and uh, replaced with uh, Wall Street garbage. Is, is that what you think the issue there, like ETFs, are you alluding to the ETFs? There's all, there's all sorts of things right. that are happening in, in Bitcoin right now that could be under that umbrella. Uh, but when you start to have people like BlackRock being like, you know what? We actually like Bitcoin now. That's a sign to pay attention. You know what I mean? Bitcoin is hope. So I think people need to, uh, in the Bitcoin space, need to be very aware that there is a, is a fight being had right now about the future of Bitcoin. And you have to decide which side you're on. Are you going to fight for Bitcoin to be a tool of financial freedom or are you going to allow it to be co-opted uh, by the powers that be that it was supposedly designed to resist them and, you know, uh, be something they can't control. Are you going to give them control of it? I mean, th the answer should be no to any Bitcoiner worth respecting, in my opinion. Whitney Webb discusses how Bitcoin's original purpose of providing financial freedom is being threatened as big financial companies like BlackRock start showing interest in it. She warns that this could signal Bitcoin being taken over by the very institutions it was meant to challenge. Webb urges the Bitcoin community to stay alert and decide whether they want to keep Bitcoin as a tool for freedom or let it be controlled by these powerful entities. Yeah, so me, me and Danny have uh, debated uh, privately this, the idea of the ETFs quite a bit and um, we keep coming down on the ultimately it's bad because there's kind of question, well, you know, but if BlackRock are marketing it and Fidelity are marketing it, then well, we're gonna it's gonna legitimize Bitcoin, and you know, and lots of people will therefore be buying Bitcoin, and yeah, you know, and, and then we realize it's gonna expand its uh, 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 reach. But then it's like, yeah, but how's it expanding its reach into a centralized entity, which is all centralized control? And then you know, we know historically back BlackRock have kind of been a little bit evil at times they've yeah they own a lot of the prop they larry they fink is not property. your friend <laughs> i'm just saying yeah He's exactly not. so yeah yeah and 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 then you can see you know mentally people getting co-opted i mean I've, I've i've done it myself i got mentally co-opted during covid i had to shed a skin afterwards and i can see it happening so that kind of idea of resisting that is, is look it's it's strong it's important um hmm okay i'm gonna let's give me a lot to think about that. Well, you know, now there's the stakes are higher than they've arguably ever been because like yeah. if they manage to get the system in place because of the technology and what they hope to do to people going as far as stuff like the brain chip and stuff, if it gets to that point. Yeah. It becomes very hard to undo and the implications for humans being able to live for, free lives is very much at stake right so like this is the be this is the time to fight this it's now if you're in the bitcoin space they want to use bitcoin to serve their ends not the people's ends Th that there needs to be awareness of that and people need to make choices and these discussions need to be had it obviously happens that like, okay, the, the value of Bitcoin has gone way up. And so now I have all this money. But at the same time, if Bitcoin's value goes to like a bazillion dollars, one Bitcoin, that doesn't mean that like you're going to live like a gazillionaire because you have Bitcoin holdings. That's going to mean that the currency, the dollar, the pound, whatever, is being inflated to oblivion. It's like Zimbabwe and Venezuela. So you may be like, wow, I have millions of dollars, but your standard of living is probably going to be the same as it is now. And everyone around you that doesn't hold Bitcoin is going to drown. <laughs> yeah, it's not nice. So it's yeah. not necessarily a thing to cheer on. Yeah. So yeah. people need to stop getting googly eyed about like, I might be a millionaire or a multimillionaire, you know, and start being like, I got into Bitcoin because this is a way to stick it to the banks who are ruining the financial system and our world. 
And I'm going to ensure that it does that. Whitney Webb and Peter McCormack discuss how big financial institutions like BlackRock and Fidelity getting involved in Bitcoin could legitimize it and expand its reach. However, they express concerns that this involvement might also lead to Bitcoin becoming centralized and controlled by these powerful entities, moving away from Bitcoin's goal of financial freedom. They stress the importance of keeping Bitcoin independent and focused on empowering individuals, rather than becoming a tool for large corporations. They also think about the wider effects of this change, pointing out that Bitcoin's value isn't just about making money, but about resisting control by the traditional financial sector. See, for effective form of resistance, we need a lot of people to understand this and, and care enough about this. And, and I feel like we're a very, very low percentage of people who are even paying attention to the things you're talking about and caring enough to resist. Well, again, it, it all comes back to personal responsibility because, I mean, ultimately, yeah. in general, what can you control? A lot of times you can only control what you do and how you react to things, this right? Guy. So um, this coming push to regulate the internet and the destruction of the existing financial system to create this put in place, uh, I've done a lot of reporting on the past of, and including the simulations of the Wall Street banks, the central banks, and the big tech firms all together simulating a massive cyber attack on the financial system as the reason that this will all be brought in, whether that's from the World Economic Forum itself or the Carnegie Endowment, which at the time was run by William Burns, who is now CIA director. Yeah, um, that's definitely stuff to pay attention to. But what if that kind of stuff happens? Well, going back to Argentina for a second, I know a lot of people from Argentina, uh, their economy literally collapsed in 2001. What, what, what have those people said about, you know, their advice in dealing with that kind of situation? Don't panic. Don't give in to the fear. Because if you're panicking, give in to the fear, you're not going to make good decisions. You're just not. You know, there's a lot to be said about preparing, but a lot of that preparedness needs to be mental preparedness, too. So you don't give in to the fear and panic. Um, the reason they need these events to justify the implementation of these policies is so uh, people are afraid because people who are afraid are easily manipulated. Mm -hmm. And so that's very easy to handle. And it also makes it easier to handle if you talk to uh, people in your family or in your you know, circle of friends or whatever about how stuff like this could happen. You know, try and prepare your base, you know what I mean, mentally. Um, even if you can't prepare physically and like spend money to you know, buy food or whatever, you know. Um, but also as far as like these efforts to regulate the internet, you know, when the internet comes back as a regulated whatever, yeah, they'll be able to surveil everything you see, but a lot of content that's there now probably won't be there when it comes back. Yeah. Now's a good time to load up some offline hard drives with all sorts of kinds of information that you may find useful in the future. Whether Are you, you doing know, that? Uh, totally. Whitney Webb and Peter McCormick talk about how important it is for more people to understand and care about the risks of powerful groups taking control of Bitcoin and other financial systems. They discuss the possibility of these groups using crises to push through big changes like stricter internet regulation. Webb urges staying calm and prepared mentally and suggests saving important information offline as future online content might be restricted or monitored. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section. Also be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates.